please put your hands together for your own New York, Tara Clancy. So it is a beautiful spring day. Blue skies, sunshine, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I am in a bar. (laughs) The kind of bar that, well, opens at 10 o'clock in the morning. You got me, you got me. So it's not the Ritz, um, but it's mine. It is my family's local bar here in New York. Um, It is owned by my Uncle Sal, and my mom worked there when she was younger, and now I work there too. Uh, I am 21, and I'm a bartender. So on this particular day, it is just me, and a regular named Joe Burr. Now, Joe was originally from South Boston, so he was like Goodwill hunting South Boston, right? He was like Sean Penn or whatever that movie was called, South Boston, right? He's, he's like a Wahlberg, you know? He's got the jeans and he's got the flannel and he's got the construction boots. And I don't actually know what he does for a living, but I figure he's in construction because of the boots, but I never ask and he never offers. He comes in. He drinks Budweiser, nothing but Budweiser, and never short of a case. With or without the help of his younger brother, Billy, who was a worse drunk, better teeth. Anyway, he's not there. It's just me and Joe alone. Uh, So my family's bar, it had like its upsides and its downsides, right? Like on the upside, like, you know, business is so good because we have so many regulars. And on the downside, you know, business is so good because we have so many regulars. These guys are there day in and day out, right? We got so many regulars, we got to give them nicknames, like, to set them apart, you know? So we got, uh, we got Big Joe, because he's big. And we got Black Joe, because he's black. And we got one arm Joe, because he actually only had one arm. We've got so many guys named Eddie that one of them has to go by Goiter Eddie. So we got, we got a couple of guys uh, who get nicknames based on the work that they do. So, you know, you got like Jimmy Ice Cream, he sells ice cream, and Vinny the Fish, you know, he sells fish. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to these guys than their jobs or their goiters, but because they weren't exactly easy to get to know, even though people didn't know the first thing about them, people judged. And by people, I mean me. So like I said, I was 21 years old and I'm a bartender, um, but I was also in college at this time, uh, which was not something that everybody you know, I grew up with was doing. Uh, and so I was proud of myself. Um, in fact, I was like a little too proud. You know, like suddenly I was coming into the bar where, you know, I had like this college walk and I had this like college talk, which is like exactly like my talk right now, except I sometimes use the word polemic, you know? (laughs) So two hours go by, Joe is still there drinking Bud. He's still the only guy in the bar. I'm still there. It's noon. I order some lunch from the Chinese food place. The Chinese food delivery guy comes. He hands me the bill. I see right away that I have been overcharged, and I'm trying to explain it to him, but he doesn't seem to understand, right? He's like not a native English speaker, and between how fast I talk and my accent, like neither am I. And so we're just kind of like going back and forth. We're not, we're not understanding. And finally, I'm like, oh, they probably charged me for two orders. Let me see if there's two orders in the bag, you know, and I'll show him. And so I go to like to take the bag to show him, and he pulls the bag back. And before you know it, we're like doing tug of war with my pork fried rice, you know? And it's getting heated, it's getting heated, and that's when Joe gets up. And this is not good. 
right? This is a tough South Boston guy. And I'm like, oh man, he is just gonna come over here and he is gonna cold cock this dude. And without even thinking, I just like shut my eyes. But what I hear next, like shoots my eyes right back open. Joe Bird is speaking slowly and calmly and completely in Chinese. <laughs> this man, this man who just a second ago was drinking a bottle of Budweiser for breakfast. This man who I have known for years to be the same day in, day out, like the only change being a little more, or a little less, like pee on his pants. This man is like rattling on and on in fluent Chinese, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. And they're like patting each other on the back now, you know, they're like working it out. They're doing that like everything is cool, bro, in Chinese, you know? And the delivery man trots on out happily and Joe turns around, sits back in the stool, takes a sip of his beer like nothing ever happened. And I'm in, a, I'm in a state of shock, right? I, mean, I can't even speak. I'm just, I'm just staring down at Joe. And so thankfully, finally, Joe speaks. He says, I sell pigeons. <laughs> My mouth says nothing. My eyebrows say, what the fuck? in Chinatown. And a couple of years back, I, I, I expanded the business to Hong Kong, and you know, my brother, he doesn't speak Cantonese, and it really holds him back. <laughs> I still got nothing, I got nothing. Um, and he says, look, I know it's strange, but my father started the business, and it was all just an accident. That does it. Joe, I say, how the hell do you accidentally sell a pigeon? And he looks up and he's like, all right, look, 40, 50 years ago maybe, my father, he's driving through Chinatown in Boston in his pickup truck, right? And in the back of the truck, he's got all these cages full of his racing pigeons. He raced pigeons, it was like his hobby. And so he gets stopped at a, at a red light uh, and a Chinese woman approaches him and she asks to buy one. And he's a little taken aback, you know, and he, he doesn't understand. And he's like, well, I haven't thought about it. And where do you race pigeons? And she cuts him off. She's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to race them. I want to eat them. To the couple of people who made that face. People eat pigeons all over the world, just so you know, right? I mean, you can go uptown right now to like a white tablecloth joint and they call it squab and they charge you $30. <laughs> Don't judge. So Joe goes on, right? So he's like, look, so my dad goes home that night. He's like, maybe this is like a business opportunity and his like wheels are turning and he's trying to figure it out. And so finally he has this light bulb moment. Street pigeons. And I say, street, street pigeons. And he says, street pigeons. And I say, street pigeons. And he says, street pigeons, street pigeons, kid. He's like, you know, uh, they're, they're free and edible, you know. Um, uh, you know, no overhead, tons of supply, you know, bingo. The family business was born. And then all he says is, and you know, I just kind of like took it to the next level. You know, I started exporting. All right. Now, of course, all of this is like totally and completely illegal. Which is why the brothers kept it a secret. And so what is the point? Uh, the point is that I am an idiot. Uh, and for two reasons. One, up until this very moment, I actually thought that Bird was his real last name. <laughs> Jimmy Ice Cream sells ice cream, right? Okay. And two, here I was working in my family business also, but also thinking that I was ambitious, right? Like I was in college and so that made me better than all these bar people I had grown up with 
only to find out that these bar people actually taught themselves Cantonese so they could be secret international criminal pigeon dealers. How's that for ambition? Anyway, now that the secret was out of the bag, I got to know Joe a lot better. Um, we kind of became friends and... <laughs> and not long afterwards, <laughs> um, not long afterwards, he took me back to his apartment one day to show me his apartment and it was amazing. It was like filled with like jade Buddhas and antique bamboo furniture, you know? I had class. Uh, and then another time I ran into him in the street one day and he decided to share something with me. It was pretty amazing, so I'm gonna share it with you. He decided to share with me how you catch um, a street pigeon. Now they used cages, of course, but I guess if you need to catch a pigeon in a pinch, this is the manual <laughs> method. Um, let's just pretend that that's a pigeon, okay, right over there. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you gotta, it's, it's really amazing. You gotta get like within a foot of a pigeon, which in and of itself is almost impossible. You gotta get within a foot of a pigeon, right? And then when you get close, you're gonna do this like one fluid motion. It like happens in like a split second, okay? You ready? Here we go. You're gonna go up and you stomp, they fly, you clap, bang. Pigeon. <laughs> Sounds easy, but it's not. I was just like this the whole time. <laughs> All right, so um, I haven't seen Joe in a really long time, and he was a really hard living guy, uh, so there's probably like an equal chance that he has OD'd as there is, that he is now heading a department for Google. That's Joe. But uh, he forever changed the way I saw the world, truly. Um, in fact, not long after he shared his story with me, I was bartending again at 10 o'clock in the morning, and again, it was just me and one regular. And this time, the guy was kind of sitting at the stool closest to the bar window. And he's drinking his drink, and he's looking out the window. And at that moment, another guy starts to walk by, and that guy, he's in like a business suit, and he's got a briefcase, and he's like very obviously on his way to the office, right? And the two of them, they lock eyes. And I've seen this before, but I had never seen it in this way. They lock eyes and they're looking at each other and I'm looking at them. And for the first time, I realize that they are both thinking the exact same thing of each other. And that is, poor guy. <laughs> 